LAMS IVAS is a system designed to track the verification and approval process of land surveys in all regional field offices of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. The LAMS IVAS process is divided into three sections, navigating the application, data entry screens, and transaction tracking. This section describes the ways and how to use the system. It explains the login, access buttons, and function keys. It also details the manner and how to save, edit, delete, log out, and exit from the system. Run LAMS application by double-clicking on LAMS shortcut from the desktop. This will display the login screen. The system administrator will assign your preferred user ID and password. The user ID identifies your access and restrictions on the system. Key in the values on the appropriate boxes then click Submit. You may change your password at any time by clicking the username box located on the upper right corner of the screen. All activities like encoding, process, and reporting within the application are properly logged with your credentials. It is important that you do not reveal your password to other people. Change your password every 30 days or when you suspect somebody is using your account. For faster data entry, LAMS employs the use of the following function keys. F4 will lead you to search for records. F10 is for saving encoded record. F8 is for deleting. The system restricts deleting records but when allowed by the system, Use this function key with caution as deleted records cannot be recalled. F9 is for recalling previous value. Tab or Enter is for finalizing the entry and moving the cursor to the next field. Escape is a function to disregard any changes on the record and clear the form. Data fields have two types, the optional and mandatory fields. The system will not allow you to proceed to the next box if a mandatory field is empty. Press the left arrow or up arrow keys to go back to the previous field. The system also checks for the values on all fields and prevents saving the record if an empty value for a mandatory field is found. Pressing F4 on non-searchable fields displays a message prompt indicating that a lookup is not available for that particular field. It is highly advisable to navigate or to move from one field to the next by pressing Enter or Tab as this will ensure the proper sequence of data entry fields. Clicking the Save button commits all the changes and saves the record to the database. The same button is also used to process records or to generate reports. Whenever this button is present in any form, pressing F10 simulates the clicking of this button. The clear button is similar to pressing the escape in the middle of the data entry process. Clicking the close button closes the form and disregards any changes on the record. If changes have been made, appropriate warning is displayed. Deletes the record. This is similar to pressing the F8 function key. Launches the lookup function, similar to pressing F4. Displays the list of valid values for the field. Pressing F4 simulates this function. To encode data on the screen, assigned data entry controls interface are used, such as the integer text box is used to encode whole numbers. Integer text boxes do not accept alpha values, special characters, and decimal points. The string text box is used to encode string values, such as alphanumeric characters. It may accept any characters on the keyboard. The check box is used to set a flag or logical field. You may use the mouse or the space bar to toggle the values of check boxes. The decimal text box is used to encode numeric values in decimal format. The number of decimal points is defined by the precision of the decimal field. The comma box will provide the facility to select from predefined values in the given list. Clicking the down arrow or pressing F4 displays the list of values. The calendar box is designed for encoding date values. You may encode the date following the month, day, year format or click the icon on the right to select a date from the calendar lookup. The radio buttons provide the visual selection of values. 
you can only use the mouse to select from the selection. Let's take a look at the parts of the screen. The map control is used to display the spatial data of the lot. In certain forms, the map control displays several lots within a given buffer or location. The map control has a toolbar that provides the following buttons to help the users in navigating the maps. Zoom so that the map fits within the window size. Magnify the view as if seen from a closer distance. Reduce the view as if seen from farther away. Zoom to size of the box drawn with mouse clicked. Pan the view so that spot clicked is centered. The grabber is also known as interactive pan and drag hand. The scene will be panned so that the initial point is moved to the spot where the drag is released. Provides interactive distance measurement. As a database application, Information on lumps is stored by rows of data called records. To distinguish every row, a record is uniquely identified through the use of primary keys. This can be done by pressing the Enter key on the primary key field for every data entry screen. This field is usually located on the top left portion of the data entry form and is the first to get the focus when the form is displayed. This indicates that a new record is being created. The primary key will be automatically assigned when all the required fields have been entered and the record is saved. Loading a previously saved record is done by simply keying in the primary key of the data entry screen and then pressing enter. In case you do not know the value of the primary key, you may search for the record by pressing the F4 key to launch the find or look up form. Pressing the escape key while a record is loaded will clear the form and return the cursor to the primary key field. However, if at least one of the fields has been edited, the system will prompt if the user wants to save the changes. Selecting yes will save the record before clearing the form, while selecting no will simply clear the form disregarding any changes made. Users are grouped into units called work groups wherein security rights and restrictions are defined. This eliminates the need to define roles and permission to individual users. Security settings are assigned collectively on the work groups. The access to forms or data entry screens is enabled by defining the work group to allow access to these forms. Restrictions and adding Editing and deleting are likewise assigned to the work group. System messages such as message prompts and other relevant information are relayed to the user through a box displayed on the upper right corner of the screen. To exit from the system, click the close button located on the upper right corner of the screen. The LAMS is a database application and employs several data entry screens to capture the information from the source documents. The primary source of data is the survey plan envelope. The LAMS database contains textual, images, and spatial information, all linked together to form an integrated information of land records. The integrated spatial data is what makes up the digital cadastral database. The LAT data is the most important information in the LAMS database. This information is stored on a specially enabled table containing all the LAT attributes including the LAT number, survey plan, geodetic engineer's information, location, owners, and other relevant fields. All the other tables in the database are linked to this table and provide additional information to complete the LAT information. To add a new parcel record, click File, then the parcel entry. Key in the location followed by the lot number, then press Enter. The system prompts that a new record is being created. If a record with the same lot number exists, the system displays a list containing the records. Selecting a record by pressing Enter on the list 
loads the record for editing. If the record has already been verified, only the system administrator can allow the modification of the record by unchecking the verified box. Fill up the fields accordingly. Selecting the proper tie point and projection type will automatically fill the values of corner zero with the coordinates of the selected tie point from the tie point table. The projection of the parcel is taken from the projection of the selected tie point. Make sure that the values for the corner zero are the same as that of the source document. A mismatch should require further investigation. As the coordinates are encoded, the system automatically computes for the bearing and distance and the map window displays the spatial data being formed. If the source document is based on the bearings and distance, select bearing and distance from the parcel source box and key in the degrees, minutes, quadrant, and distance values. The coordinates are then automatically computed. Upon completing the data entry of coordinates, make sure the last corner is linked to the first corner to form a polygon. This will display the resulting polygon and display the computed area. If the computed area does not match the area of the lot data computation, the system displays the number in red color to indicate a mismatch. If there is a very significant difference in the area, the record should be flagged with a record error. You may recalculate the computation by clicking the Calculate button. To add a new record, click File then select Reference Points. When encoding new records, identify the province and the municipality to identify its location. If the reference point was established through a survey project, select the corresponding survey project. If a particular reference point is a local coordinate, the corresponding grid coordinate should also be encoded so that the parcels can be projected on the proper grid projection. The latitude and longitude fields represent the geographical position of the control point and are used to transform convert coordinates from the local plane to PTM coordinates. It contains survey information including the maps and scanned documents of the survey envelopes. To add a new survey record, click File then select Survey Entry. It is also mandatory to key in the location of the survey as well as the geodetic engineer information. The maps and supporting documents are uploaded using the buttons provided for the purpose. Upon uploading the documents, you will be prompted to identify the contents of the document. Individual pages of the document must be properly labeled for archiving purposes. Clicking the Edit button launches the Label Editor screen. Encoding screen for the entry of geodetic engineers will be used to validate GEs and provide pertinent information to the front desk as to the status GE, his license and PTR, including tax identification number and email address. The same information will be used for mailing notices and communications. It is highly important that this information is constantly updated. When the inactive button is checked, the GE is prevented from making any transactions within the LMS office. An image of the GE as well as the specimen of the signature may be used to confirm the identity of the GE. The initial setup of LAMS requires the complete list of all the GEs registered in the GEP Association. If a GE does not exist on the database, the system administrator should add the record using this data entry screen. Digital projection maps are scanned images of maps used in plotting the relative position and shape of the parcels within a given map index identified through the PM number. Generally, the projection maps are similar to the cadastral maps with the only difference in the fact that the projection maps are constantly updated with subdivisions, consolidations, and new surveys of lots.
Land classification maps are necessary to determine if the lot is within the alienable and disposable area of the municipality. This process of projecting the lots is usually conducted on original surveys and areas under the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. The Map Viewer is a special enabled screen that is used to view the map of a barangay or a municipality. It is equipped with special tools that enable GIS functionalities through easy access toolbars and menus. LAMS Application Entry is a system designed to capture the information of public land applications from the different offices of the DENR. It captures, validates, links, and stores the textual and image information from the scanned documents of the application forms. The system features user-friendly data entry screens with customized facilities to track the routing information, log the changes, validate the entries, and maintain the ledger associated with the use, sale, or lease of public land. It is intended that when all data is captured, they will be collected and stored in a central repository to build the national land database which can be accessed through a secure and reliable means of communication. The IVAS Transaction Tracking System monitors the verification and approval process of survey plans. Transaction Console is designed to provide information like location, stage, and the user who is processing the transaction at any given time. The system also provides geographic information system functionalities to automate and streamline the verification and approval process. This screen displays the current transaction being processed within a given work group as well as the transactions to be received from other units. The set of access buttons within the transaction console provide access to different functionalities such as clicking the process button will launch the corresponding screen for the process. If the transaction has recently been assigned to the work group, the system will prompt if the user wants to process the transaction. This will consequently receive and set the transaction to the current work group. Routing information can be shown by clicking the Details button. This screen shows the date and time the transaction was received and processed at any work group. This also allows the status and the time the transaction was finished at the stage. Users may indicate the findings on the Remarks field. When the status is set to Pending, the comments placed on the Remarks field is used to print the pending form. The refresh button can be used to refresh and update the display of transactions. POTS transactions provide a means to consolidate and group the survey envelopes before they are transmitted to the next stage. Grouping the transactions by batches provides a means to minimize transmittals. Selecting Receive will launch the same screen with the Receive button activated. Clicking the Receive button will set all the transactions in the batch to your work group as you would on the regular individual transactions. The front desk work group is configured to allow creating new transactions. Clicking New on the Transaction Console launches the selection of transaction types that can be created. Select IVAS and then click Create. This will launch the form for adding new IVAS transactions. Key in the appropriate values. If the GE submitted a digital land survey data file, click Upload Survey File and view the uploaded records. You may save the new transactions or immediately pass to the next work group by clicking Forward. All entry screens for the transaction tracking system contains the routing instructions panel such as Remarks, Status, Priority, forward, save, and close. As part of the verification process, it is important that the LAMS database maintains a complete record of the cadastral projects as well as the new parcels from isolated surveys. 
This will ensure that any verification of surveys will be based on the true and validated information of lots on record. The records updating states precedes the verification of IVAS transactions where the reference lot representing the mother lot is encoded and updated in the LAMS database. You may search for existing land record based on the barangay of the survey plan. Alternately, you may search the whole database, regardless of the location, by clicking the search DCDB button. If the record does not exist, click the new button and create a new lot record by adding the desired parcel record on the parcel entry screen. Make sure to check the verified field of the new parcel record. The encoding of survey records is the part of the IVAS process where the data on the survey returns are encoded on LAMS. This may not be necessary if the GE submitted the digital file on DLSD format. For manually submitted plans, the mother lots, resultant lots, and their corner information will be encoded as a preparatory step in the verification process. Appropriate screens have been provided for this purpose. Projection using IVAS projection maps provides a way to automatically plot the parcel and determine if the parcel has already been subdivided or consolidated on a previously approved survey plan. It also prevents the possibility of double surveys. The verification and projection play a very important role in the IVAS process. Depending on the preferred setup, LAMS projection and verification screen may be implemented separately by different units. However, the same screen will be used and the functionalities, even if available, should be restricted to their assigned tasks. The uploaded projection maps will be used to project the parcels of the survey returns. When plotted on the grid system, the relative location of the parcel on the georeference maps will be shown on the screen. You may either plot the mother lot or the resultant lots. The following are the steps to use the LAMS projection. Select the lot, either mother or resultant lot, to be projected. Click Projection Map. This launches the projection map screen. LAMS automatically determines the PM number based on the weighted centroid of the selected lot. It then queries the database for the uploaded maps based on the PM number. The selection is then listed on the right corner of the screen while the polygon is displayed on the main screen. Click a projection map from the selection. The map will then be shown on the main screen along with the parcel to project its location. If the polygon does not fall within the image, select another map to display. You may hide or show the map by clicking the checkbox on the list. There are cases when several projection maps exist for a given PM number, as in the case of multiple sheets. This will cause the maps to be displayed on top of the other. You may deselect some of the map or change the opacity value depending on the level of transparency you prefer. Click Apply to effect the desired capacity. Click Close when finished. The verification stage is the heart of the IVAS process. This is where the survey returns are subjected to mathematical, textual, and spatial validation to ensure that the surveys are consistent with the guidelines set forth in the survey manual. To facilitate fast and reliable verification, LAMS includes mathematical and GIS functionalities that aid in the automatic detection of errors on coordinates, bearing and distances, areas, closure, spatial gaps and overlaps, and other inconsistencies that may be found in the survey plan. The following are the steps for the LAMS IVAS verification. This series of steps ensures that the mother lot submitted by the GE is consistent with the values of the lot data on record. This is to ensure that the LAMS DCDB will contain uniform records. This screen details the reference lots. Make sure that the lot records are properly encoded on the Lot Reference tab. Double-click the items from the list to view the details. Note that the list may contain several lot references as in the case of consolidation. 
Verify that the number of items on the LAT reference tab has the same number of items on the mother LAT tab. Double click the item from the list to view the mother LAT record. Note that the list may contain several mother LATs in case of consolidation of LATs. Clicking the Verify button will launch the numerical verification of the technical description of the LAT data. The screen is divided into two parts. The left side displays the value of the submitted mother LAT. The right side displays the values of the LAT data on record. Initially, the screen will load showing the selected mother LAT with no LAT record values. You will need to select the reference LAT record from the list by clicking Select LAT Record button. For simple subdivision with a single LAT reference, the values will be automatically loaded on the right side. Otherwise, a lookup form will be displayed where you can select the LAT reference to compare the mother LAT. When the values for both sides are loaded, the mismatch values are shown in red color. You may click on the view difference only to display the difference in the values. It is mandated that all mother LATs to be subdivided should conform to the original data in the record section of the LMS to ensure consistency of information. As such, any discrepancy in the values should be carefully investigated. When the verification is finished, click on the verified box to indicate that the mother LAT has been verified. To view the spatial data of the mother LAT plotted with the reference LAT, click on the Plot button. This screen will display the polygons of the LATs. You can view the gaps and overlaps by clicking the button on top of the screen. The difference in the calculated area may also be used as a determining factor to continue or set the transaction to pending. Projection of the survey on the land classification map will show the relative location of the parcels on the map for the given municipality. This is the same as using the projection map, only the maps used were plotted to delineate the disposable lands from the forest area. Select any item from the maps shown on the list. The maps are arranged according to date approved, so you will need to check the latest map where the parcel is clearly positioned. The areas for the alienable and disposable will determine if the survey passes the land classification projection. The verification of lot computations ensures that the approval of new lots is spatially and mathematically consistent with the existing and previously approved lots in the DCDB. This is implemented by selecting a computation such as mother lots, consolidated boundary, blocks as the base and plotting the new set of lots within and on top the base lot to determine the gaps, overlaps, and the conformity of angles and distances the selection may include. The automated verification of the coordinate, bearing, and distances is conducted through the use of a spatial analysis to automate the process. It is important to click the refresh button after each step to requery the lot information as well as the changes resulting from the previous operation. A map window showing the selected lots will appear. The corner check is based on the premise that every corner should match another corner from either the mother lot or the adjacent lot. The corner check is based on the premise that every corner should match another corner from either the mother lot or the adjacent lot. The corners of the resultant lot is checked one by one and compared with the corners of the adjacent lot and the mother lot. The corner check includes the tie point. If a corner is found without any match, the corner is displayed on the window and a message prompt showing the number of errors is displayed. To revert to the original display, click Refresh. The check on closure is performed by displaying the list of lots and calculating the closure of the polygon one at a time. If the lot passes the check, the corresponding check is displayed. Otherwise, the verifier is left with a choice to manually compute and decide if the lot passes the closure check by clicking the check button at the bottom of the screen. The check on area is conducted by displaying the list of lots, calculating the area of the polygon, and checking if the declared area falls within the rounded value of the computed area. If the lot passes the check, the corresponding check is displayed. Otherwise, 
the verifier is left with a choice to manually compute for the area and decide if the computation and rounding is well within the allowed margin of error by clicking the check button at the bottom of the screen. A total area of the lots is also displayed for comparison. The checking of along lines ensures that the bearing of every segment is aligned and conforms with the adjacent resultant lots or the mother lot or boundary. This check also computes for the sum of the distances of the lines of the resultant lots which should be equal to distance of the boundary line. If no error is found, a corresponding message is displayed. To revert to the original display, click Refresh. This check shows the gaps and overlaps of the resultant lots. The lots are plotted to check if the area extends over the adjacent lots or space between them exists. The discrepancy is then shown on the screen and the sum of the erroneous area is displayed. This check shows the gaps and overlaps of the resultant lots plotted against the boundary. The resultant lots are consolidated and plotted to check if the area extends over or a space between the boundary lot exists. The discrepancy is then shown on the screen and the sum of the erroneous area is displayed. The projection on the DCDB provides a visual reference on the plotting of lot against previously approved surveys. This is ideal if LAMS has a complete record of all the approved surveys for the given municipality. Otherwise, as in currently the case, it is recommended to use the DCDB in conjunction with the projection maps for a more accurate and reliable projection. By clicking the DCDB, the map window shows the parcel plotted with the adjacent parcels. You may adjust the buffer by clicking the up and down buttons. Click refresh to apply the new buffer zone and display the plotted parcels. The final verification and the final approval has the same screen and procedure as the verification and projection. The final verifier may reconduct the same automated checks to verify and confirm the findings on the previous stages. On this final stage of the verification, however, the approving officer will be asked to provide the survey number to be assigned. The status of the survey is then changed to approved and the survey data is saved on the database of approved surveys of LAMS Live Database. <music>